Bucket Hey, Buckets, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm alive, Ian. And so it's a good day when you are still alive after the couple days I've had. It's good to be back. We're kind of getting the flow of things. Match days are going. Feeling good right now. All right, before we get into the show stoppage time, which is, of course, the greatest betting show on earth, um, there was a cry for help yesterday on social media platforms. <laughs> I noticed I noticed that. I recognized it. I also sent out the emergency services to try and find my good friend, John Buckets Eimer. And before I ask you how the fuck you are, Buckets, Jeff, uh, producer Jeff, roll the magic, <laughs> roll the clip. Let's listen to Buckets' cry for help as he got lost in the fucking woods. About an hour and a half ago, Freya and I went on a half mile loop. We are now three miles into the backwoods because Freya chased a squirrel and got us off track. And I don't know if we're gonna make it back in one piece. I leave the remaining portion of FC stoppage time that I have, of course, to Ian Paul Joy. Ian, carry out our legacy of creating the best sports betting show on the planet. I have full faith that you will find another co-host that can do what I did. And I believe in you. Thank you everyone for your support over the years. If I do make it back, you can disregard this video and just pretend like it never happened. Here's our our supplies. We've got some, excuse me, bud. Fry, excuse me. We've got dog food, an apple, one more bottle of water, a pair of nunchucks for hunting, and two Rice Krispie squares. I'm feeling pretty good about our chances of survival out here. But also, <laughs> at first this was a bit. It's becoming less of a bit because we're very far from our car, but we'll figure it out eventually. We got, we got this. We got this. We're fine. We're not too worried. All right, Buckets, uh, <laughs> explain yourself. You get lost in the woods. You're with Freya. And what eventually happened? I mean, it's kind of crazy. It's, it's kind of a mess, Ian. And the difficult part about being Buckets, the difficult part about my life is people don't know when I'm doing a bit or a joke or when things are serious. And I'll be honest, when I filmed that first video, it was kind of a bit. I was a little lost, but, you know, I had my phone. I had service. I wasn't worried about it. I was going to get home. And then three hours later, when I posted the second video, I had no clue where I was anymore. You're going to need to bleep that for me, Jeff. Sorry, Mama Buckets. But I legitimately got lost in the woods of Columbus, Ohio, to the point where I had to call and eventually find service to call the park rangers. And they had to come out on their little golf cart you know and then basically they go we don't know where you are so just start yelling and so i just went ah and just kept yelling into the sky eventually you see the cart pulling up the lady's like you okay and i'm sitting there with freya like yeah no we're good and but i mean i was stuck in the woods from like 10 a.m to almost 5 6 p.m it was scarier than i thought it was gonna be yeah, I was thinking about the movie Blair Witch Project. I'm sure you've probably not seen that one oh. where, yeah, they get, yeah, you should probably watch that one. That was a little <laughs> bit crazy. <laughs> uh, but listen, you're doing well now, and I'm glad you're safe and sound. Glad Freya is doing okay as well. I do appreciate the fact that you are going to give me the full rights to a show uh, called Stoppage Time, which is, of course, the greatest betting show on earth. I appreciate that, Buckus. <laughs> Thanks for giving me your portion of it. Me and producer Jeff would have had a lot of fun without you. But now you're back. We'll continue the show as always. Anyway, let's just touch upon real quickly what happened last week. Um, how did we get on with the picks last week? I mean, it was kind of interesting. The games were crazy. The results were kind of crazy as well. Yeah, the bets did not go well last week, but that's, I don't want to say expected, but in the first couple match days, it's going to be messy. And that's why we preach betting responsibly and maybe dropping your unit size. Because I will be honest, we had incredible EV, especially on that Real Madrid match. By the time that match went live, we gave out that pick at minus 105, Ian. It was minus 190 at kickoff. We had massive plus EV there. And it just didn't matter for some of these bigger teams that really didn't show up yet, at least. Shows you all the loyal listeners are placing wagers on exactly what you're stating right there, Buckets. But because of the misfortune of the games not being necessarily great and the bets not necessarily hitting from the last show, um, and also the unfortunate incident called hacking took place this weekend on your Twitter account. The emergency message came into IPJ. Uh, help, <laughs> help. I've got no social media access. Boys, producer Jeff, I'm going to take over the Twitter account. Is that okay? Now, obviously called X. And we said, yes, of course, Buckets, please. As you normally should be doing any weekend, placing live wagers. You fucking crushed the live wagers this past weekend. And a lot of my friends were tailing Buckets. Yeah, no, we had a good time with the live bets because live bets are something that we really enjoy here on the show, Ian. It gives us a chance to watch and see how teams are playing and who's really showing up. And if I'm not mistaken, we went one, two, three, four, five, 
So eight and O on our live bet Saturday, tweeting from the stoppage time Twitter. We went all the way from the EPL to the championship to Paris's league duh, to just, I mean, the Greece super league, we were cashing all over the place. So make sure that you're following the stoppage time Twitter at FC stoppage time. Cause every weekend moving forward, that is going to be where I'm placing my live bets. One day of a weekend, it can be Saturday or Sunday. Buckus is going to post directly live from Stoppage Time account. In the other day, he's going to be posting from his account and reposting them on Stoppage Time account. That is something we are demanding. The loyal listeners are demanding because the luck and fortune fell in the favor of my man, John Bucketheimer. So it doesn't matter whether you're hitting bets on the show or off the show. Our social media platforms are absolutely crushing it right now. And John Bucketheimer, one of the reasons why is because Hot Coco has decided to take over the social media platforms and on TikTok and on on Instagram Reels, we're starting to make some waves. So she's doing very good. The, the content has been outstanding so far. She's got a new Instagram account, uh, John Bucket Timer. She's got a new Instagram account. Don't know if you're following her yet, but it's Hot Coco Bets on Instagram. So if all the little listeners out there want to go follow Hot Coco, you can get some picks. I'm sure she's going to place some bets directly on there herself, um, but she's going to be very active for the social media accounts um, across TikTok and Instagram especially buckets that's kind of a relief for you because i know you love doing the videos but now hot coco's reaching out to you and be like yo bucket send me 15 seconds please i love the videos i'm bad at the editing so it's nice to have someone saying hey buckets i'll take care of the side of things you just focus on the bets because that's kind of what i'm here for i mean the bets and then the random entertainment of getting lost in the woods every now and then yeah, the random entertainment of stoppage time with IPJ, of course, John Bucket Timer and producer Jeff or Coco every now and again will appear on the show doing Major League Soccer bets. But as you have noticed over the last uh, week or two, we have been obviously cutting back the time of the show. My father, Brian Joy, loves the time of the show. He thinks, you know, I think it's a good time. You know, it's a good time slot. You know, hit that 30 minutes, 35 minutes, get the fuck out of there. It's a great time. So you guys are doing a great job. Loves every episode, watches every episode, sometimes tailing your bets bucket, sometimes missing that live hits because he's not on social media. Um, but yeah, shout out to dad as well. Buckets, you ready for today's show? Because today we're going big again. Let's do it. Let's go real big here, Ian. All right, real quickly, I just want to explain to you exactly. This weekend, obviously, we've got all the domestic games back, but just some of the big games that you've got to look forward to. On Thursday, we have got Europa League qualification and Europa Conference League action, which is absolutely brilliant. We are down to the final stages of qualification for the big competition. On Friday, we've got Gladbach against Leverkusen. It's a nice derby to start off the Bundesliga campaign, which is absolutely brilliant. Of course, uh, Leverkusen once again scoring in the last minute of the game, thanks to Patrick Schick in the German Super Cup to equalize against Stuttgart guard taking that game to penalty kicks and then winning Leverkusen now got three trophies to their name which is absolutely insane and buckets get this one and for all you stoppage time lovers out there Stuttgart disappointing Leverkusen with Patrick Schick they have scored 26 goals since the beginning of last season from the minute 85 onwards through stoppage time to the end of the game 26 fucking goals which is absolutely unheard of which is crazy. I've never even heard of it. PSG also in action on Friday as well. On Saturday, we've got Aston Villa against Arsenal. We've got Borussia Dortmund in action against Frankfurt. Producer Jeff is back. We've got the, the yellow, black, the black, yellow, the bees, whatever the fuck Borussia Dortmund want to call themselves. <laughs> They're just brilliant this year. Nuri Shaheen leading the way for them. Producer Jeff is excited as well. And let's hope that at some point this season we can go watch them. Also on Saturday is Lyon against Monaco in the French League, which is brilliant. On Sunday, Real Madrid after draw against Mallorca. They're back in action against Real Valladolid and then of course the boys in brown the mighty FC St. Pauli are in action against Heidenheim and my man John Bucketsheimer's Bayern Munich are back in action against Wolfsburg away from home then we go to Monday Hellas Verona against Juventus who had a really good victory against Como to begin their Serie A campaign under Thiago Motta Villarreal against Celta Vigo and then on Tuesday we've got Rayo Vallecano against Barcelona we've got a full EFL Cup slip which is crazy and then the DFB Pokal is also back in action with Stuttgart and Buckets' Galatasaray are also in action on Tuesday. So that's just some of the big games to look forward to. And Buckets, it is time. Are you ready? Let's do this, baby. I, I will say in advance right now, this slate took me much longer than any other slate I've done because I was really having trouble pinpointing my favorite games here, Ian. But I think I found some beauties that you are really going to like. 
You know it wouldn't be an episode of Stoppage Time if we didn't get you some wagers from our betting expert. Yes, that is right. The blonde bombshell. The betting expert. The betting unicorn. John Bucket Timer. Welcome back to Buckets is about to hit the fucking big time. Buckets, I am looking for multiple bets for you. Let's begin with six. If you have more, we'll take more. I want one from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And let's go all the way to Tuesday if we possibly can as well. You can go anywhere you want. Any league you want. Any team you want, I would love to see some Bundesliga bets in there. I'm just saying it because St. Pauli, the mighty St. Pauli, are back in the league. Producer Jeff's Borussia Dortmund are in action. And, of course, John Buckenheimer's Bayern Munich are in action. Just a few places you could go as well. But let's begin with your best bet for this Thursday. Looking at this Thursday, I am looking at the Europa Conference League, a.k.a. the Mickey Mouse Cup. However, I have two absolute killers playing in this match i'm looking at the matchup between bk hacken taking on fc heidenheim and ian you said to give you six bets or more i'm going to give you more than six bets because i have two bets for this very first game i'm doing a classic something that i don't do often but when i do it it usually goes pretty well i'm taking hacken over one and a half team total at plus 120 and i'm also taking heidenheim over one and a half team total at minus 120 hacken games have been absolute bloodbath and it has been one of the most i mean for me joyous things i've ever seen hacken plays a style of football that makes buckets the happiest if you look at their recent fixtures in conference league one one to paid followed by a six one match against oh let me get this right i want to do this right yeah six one against paid one one against paid six one against diddlang six two against diddlang this is a team that is not playing defense they are attacking like mad and even in league play 2-2 2 2 against Veronmo, 4 0 against Ferasis, 5 3 against Elfsburg, 4 1 against AIK. This is a team that doesn't know how to sit back and defend. And this is a team that, whether they are down 2 0 or up 2 0, they attack the exact same way. They've got the foot on the gas for 90 minutes, no matter what. And it is creating some of the most exciting and front facing football that I've seen in a very long time. I mean, just give me goals. I don't care who wins. Give me a 2 2 scoreline at the end of the day. We cash both of these. I'm pretty happy. Hacking currently 18 games into their schedule. They're fifth in the Alsvenskan right now. 38 goals scored, 31 against, which is uh, similar to exactly what Buckets was just saying about the goals scored, goals against. At home this season, they have played nine games, five wins and 23 goals at home with 16 goals conceded Buckets. That sounds like an absolute banger. The only issue I've got with uh, Heidenheim Buckets, because I know you are a big fan of Heidenheim, They've obviously lost Jan Niklas Besta. He went to Benfica, which is crazy in the transfer window. And also your man, Tim Kleindienst. He disappeared to Borussia Mönchengladbach. Those are two big losses for Heidenheim. How are you expecting them to do in the Bundesliga? How are you expecting them to be able to compete against uh, European opposition and also the greatest team in Germany, FC St. Pauli, on the opening match day of the Bundesliga? I was about to say, I expect Heidenheim to be so focused on this game that they might struggle a bit in their season opener and probably get their ass kicked by the great FC St. Pauli. I'm definitely nervous. And this is something that we do warn about all the time, especially in these first couple fixtures. It's very hard to predict how teams are going to play. The reason I'm okay taking it in this European fixture against Hacken is because Hacken doesn't care how you play. If Heimheim wants to park the bus, fine. Hacken will get two goals. It doesn't matter. As long as one of these two hit, we're at least escaping, or escaping even. I mean, I still think that Heidenheim's going to find a way to get some goals here. Yeah, just a run through of what Heidenham have done through their preseason. 3-1 victory, 10-0 victory, 20-0 victory, 4-0 victory, 1-0 victory over Parma, 2-1 victory over Aris Limassol, 2-1 victory over Espanyol, and a 4-0 victory over Villingen. They have won every single game in preseason so far. Goals galore on Thursday for John Bucket's Did I hear 20-0 oh. somewhere in there? <laughs> yeah. Heidenheim 20, SS Val Gloet 0. That's my kind of preseason game right there, okay? <laughs> Let me just give you an insight into the IPJ. I once played a preseason game for Ingolstadt, and we were beating the local team. Of course, they were like the, the village team. They were like, yeah, amateur players with big beer bellies and shit. And they were like, yo, we should just totally give them a goal. It's like 15 nil, And I was like... Fuck no. If they want to score a goal, how about you work fucking harder? How about you try to beat us and score a goal? You don't give goals away. 20 to no preseason game, my kind of game. Buckets, let's go to Friday. 
<laughs> let's go to Friday and let's look at the league uh, matchup here between Montpellier taking on PSG here. PSG was a team that Ian and I talked to about preseason and said, I'm a little bit worried without Kylian Mbappe. Are they going to be able to piece together a bunch of wins? Are they going to have a great season? Will they score goals? And then they played the Havana in the opening game and they showed everyone that they only needed six minutes to score three goals. And they won that first fixture 4-1, no problem. Now they're taking a Montpellier side who, historically, this is a really, really fun game. If you look to the head-to-head -head history, the last time these two teams played, PSG won that match 6-2. The time before that, 3-0, 3-1, 5-2. This is a team that, generally speaking, when they play PSG, they understand that they are the heavy underdogs. And they understand that if they want to win, they're not going to do it by playing defense. They have to score goals. Montpellier opened up their season with a 1-1 draw against Strasbourg. And frankly, I wasn't impressed. I watched that game. I had both teams to score. I was happy about that. But Montpellier knows that they have to do better if they want to take points off of PSG, while PSG is still looking absolutely incredible. I think PSG win this game, and I think it's a similar scoreline to when they beat La Havre. I think this is a 3-1. It's a 4-1 kind of game. But I do think that Montpellier do get on the score sheet. So give me both teams to score and over two and a half goals on this one, Ian, at minus 115. What do you think? Yeah, love this play. Obviously, watching PSG is quite interesting right now for me because every single time I watch PSG, they're starting to really entertain me. Montpellier are quite unpredictable right now. I don't necessarily know exactly how they're going to go. I just wanted to bring up a stat here. I'm not sure if I can find it in time because I was watching that game um, in the French League and I was trying to figure out exactly who Strasbourg were because they've just replaced... Um, uh, Patrick Vieira as their boss, Strasbourg. And I, I had a great start because if I find it, I'll sing it out to you. I think they started a whole um, team of players under the age of 23, Strasbourg, which is an amazing statistic wow. in today's game. A whole team of players under 23 years old. I'll double check it and confirm it later on if I can find it while you're giving us through the next bit. But listen, PSG, obviously terrific this past weekend. We're all underestimating them as to what they will do domestically. Let's not forget that Kylian Mbappe, Lionel Messi, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Edison Cavani, go through the names, Neymar, and then they keep going, Beckham, Ronaldinho. PSG's history of super stars is clearly there and evident the new idea the new philosophy is a new idea and i think luis enrique is onto something pretty special with phb because, because there's no longer the superstar in the team the team has become the star so i'm watching out for psg across multiple platforms here domestically i'm expecting them to fucking clean up offensively when it comes to the champions league i'm expecting them to be one of those teams that no one's expecting them to be there or thereabouts I can see PSG making it to the semi-final this year of the Champions League. That's how good I think they are. The team is now the star. They need their best players playing well. Of course, they need to have Colomani scoring goals. They need to make sure that they are um, bench players, Gonzalo Ramos. I mean, even the youngsters, Bradley Barcola, Zayir Emery. I mean, they've got so many weapons. Dembele scored a header this weekend. I mean, they need everything to tick for them. But I love this uh, bucket. So I just, uh, I'm loving PSG this year, full stop. So I'm excited about this bet. And um, obviously Montpellier are a team that are unpredictable right now. Let's go to your best bet for Saturday. Saturday, it is time to finally pop this Bundesliga cherry here, Ian, and to give us our favorite fixture and our favorite bet for this match day of slates. And I'm not going to Jeff's Borussia Dortmund, the Bs, the black and yellow, the whatever. Out of respect to you, I'm not going to St. Pauli, and I'm not going to trust my Bayern boys until I see them play a couple weeks. But a team that I do trust, probably an uncomfortable amount right now, is RB Leipzig as they take on Bochum. I think this RB Leipzig side is going to be devastating this season. I watched that DFB Pokal first cup round against Essen, albeit a much weaker opponent, but watching Lois Appenda, but watching that they still have Javi Simons and watching Benjamin Sesko there now, this is a team that is going to do some serious damage in the Bundesliga. And as they take on a Bochum side in their opener, a Bochum side that had the second most goals conceded in the Bundesliga season last year, only behind Darmstadt and a Bochum side that is playing horrendous football right now. I think Leipzig are going to run over them. So I had to give us at least one bet that was even money plus odds here. I'm taking taking Leipzig over two and a half team total. So Leipzig to score at least three goals in this fixture at plus 100. I just think that Leipzig is going to make a statement game in this opener and remind everyone that they are still a top four side. I think it could be ugly, Ian. I think this could be 4-0, 5-0, 5-1. This could be a really, really tough match for Bochum, but a great match for us as sports bettors. I've got a question for you and the loyal listeners out there. Tell me if I'm fucking crazy or not. No, that's not the question. The question is, do you think Leipzig can finish above Leverkusen in the Bundesliga this season? I think Leipzig, Ian, 
finish second in the Bundesliga. I think they finish over Dortmund as well. I've got Bayern Munich, Leipzig. Whoa! And then Dortmund, Leverkusen, not really sure, don't really care. My boys win it, Leipzig second. It's a good time here in Germany. Wow. Okay, yeah. Listen, I'm with you there as well. I ha You must have been watching my show Scoreline on CBS Sports Galazzo Network because I have been saying the same fucking thing. Leipzig are a dangerous team. Think of every single weapon that they've got going forward. And then you bring in Javi Simmons once again for another year. I mean, this is a dangerous team. I got to watch Leipzig up close and personal against Aston Villa in a friendly game most recently at Red Bull Arena. And they were incredibly dynamic, incredibly dangerous. They have got weapons left, right, and center, a solid defense. Gulashi's back in goal. I mean, this is a dangerous Leipzig team. And I think Marco Rosa, under the um, the idea of team chemistry and keeping the consistency with that group of players, I think they're going to have a hell of a season. So I'm with you. Love this bet first and foremost, but I'm also wanting to say that I think Leipzig finish above Leverkusen this year and they finish again, sorry, Jeff, above Borussia Dortmund. And they finish second behind Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga this campaign. Great bet. Love it, Buckets. Let's go to Sunday. Sunday, this is, I wanted to include at least one parlay, Ian, but this is called like, I got to think of a better name than this, the most baby, pathetic, chalk, whatever you want to call it, parlay. I'm parlaying three different English Premier League sides all on the double chance, which means win or draw. Bournemouth versus Newcastle, Newcastle, win or draw. Wolves versus Chelsea, Chelsea, win or draw. And Liverpool versus Brentford, Liverpool, win or draw. If you parlay those three together, and not the best odds, but minus 125. If you want to take a more aggressive approach, take Newcastle money line, Chelsea money line, Liverpool money line. That's closer to plus 550. But I'm keeping this one nice and safe. I'm not sure about a lot of these EPL sides, and I'm not sure what to expect out of Newcastle on the road yet. Because on the road last season, they were absolutely unbearable to watch. I know they're supposed to kind of, you know, they got the long rest. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be able to put together a good result now. But they looked shady in that season opener as the, after they picked up that quick red here. So Newcastle scares me a little, little bit. I think Liverpool win their game 8,000-0. to zero. And Chelsea's Chelsea, so I'd rather take them to draw just in case because you never know what the Blues are going to do here, Ian. But wanted to have some fun. Wanted to get the EPL on the slate, and I want to do a parlay. So give me that at minus one twenty-five. You lost me at Chelsea. Now you're expecting Chelsea double chance. Yeah, they just they just have to not lose. They can draw against Wolves. Give us a one-one, and that's fine. But you think they're going to lose? Chelsea have lost three of the last four games when they've gone to Wolves. It is a difficult place to go play. Chelsea right now, very interesting team. A lot of controversy coming out of that place. Just signed Jao Felix, if I'm not mistaken. They are yeah. signing. <laughs> a fucking roster for the next 20 years, apparently. Give a 10-year contract to Cole Palmer. They're giving out baseball contracts at Chelsea Football Club right now. Raheem Sterling's dropping statements out moments before their game against Manchester City, saying that he's not even involved in the squad and he's done everything he possibly can to be involved in the squad. He's unhappy. Everyone's unhappy. The only one that apparently is not unhappy is fucking Todd Bowley in charge of this Chelsea squad. Enzo Moresca's got his work cut out with that squad, Buckets. Wolves are an interesting team. I, I don't know where they're at, so I don't know a prediction for that game. But I'm going to say this right now. Chelsea are unpredictable, so be very careful on that leg of the parlay. I'm just, I'm not bought into Chelsea. Awful preseason they've had as well yeah. this year. They came over to the United States of America, and of course they lost that first game against uh, Manchester City in the Premier League this season. But if you look at the friendly games, they had a 1-1 against Inter. They lost against Real Madrid um 2-1. They lost against Manchester City 4-2. They did beat Club America 3-0. Um, but they lost to Glasgow Celtic 4-1 and tied 2-2 with Wrexham. So I'm just throwing it out there that Chelsea, for me, are a dangerous play. But I trust you, John Bucketsheimer, and I'm hoping that we come back here next week and that's the only game we discuss is Chelsea completing <laughs> the, 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 their leg of a three-leg parlay. I like the bet. Um, I'm not going to tell that one just because of the Chelsea bet, but I'm, I'm going to love you anyway, regardless. Buckets, let's go to Monday. <laughs> Monday, I've got a question because people need to remember that I am new to soccer, right? I've only been watching for about two or three years now. So when I heard this name, Ian, I know he's famous. I know he's probably a legend. But before I get into this game, what does the name Sesc Fabregas mean to you? Uh, Premier League legend. Okay. 
Premier League legend. Definitely knew who that was. I just know him as the manager of Como 1907 in Serie A. That is how I knew him when I was studying this play. I was like, Cesc Fabregas, oh, that's a name I've heard for sure. But right now, all I care is that his Como side can have a better second match as they take on Kaiyari. I'm looking at both teams to score in this one, Ian, at minus 120 here. Kaiyari were one of the worst defensive units in all of Serie A last season. This is a team that can score goals, but they could not play defense to save their lives. 68 goals conceded over their 38 matches last season. This is a team that just tried to hold on for dear life and avoid relegation. Now they're going against the Como side, who lost their season opener 3-0 to Juventus. That's a tough way to start the season, a little bit of a baptism by fire. But I always like taking newly promoted sides in the first couple games to get that first goal. You've got to crack that goal eventually. And I do think that against the Cagliari side, this is a side where or Como can say, hey, we can only not get a goal here, but we can produce a positive result. We can get a point out of this one. And this is a match where we should see both teams play, or playing very offensive to try to get any points that they can here, Ian. I love both teams to score. I'm a longtime fan of Cesc Fabregas, so it just makes sense for me to back this Como side. I love the fact that you're so new to this game. Cesc Fabregas is a Premier League legend. Let me just break it down for you. Arsenal, he won the FA Cup in 2004 5. He won the Premier League in 2003 and 4. He won the Emirates Cup and the Community Shield at Chelsea. He won the FA Cup and two times winner of the Premier League in 2016 17 and 14 and 15. He did also win the EFL Cup. He then went on to Barcelona, where he won La Liga, obviously in between the two clubs. He won the Liga in 2012 13. He won the UEFA Super Cup in 11 12, Copa del Rey 11 12, FIFA Club World Cup in 2011 and Japan and he won the Spanish Super Cup a couple of times as well oh yeah by the way he won the World Cup for Spain in 2010 in South Africa <laughs> and he also is two times winner of the European Championships with Spain as well so not only manager of Como legendary footballer shall we stay love the bet because Como need to start winning their games full stop you got to start scoring goals to win their games. You're going to get into the relegation battle in the first half of the season, and you don't want to do that. These home games are important. Cagliari were impressive. I think they played Roma this past weekend, and it ended up in a draw. So I'm really intrigued to see how Como handle that type of a game. And I'm actually I'm excited to see what lineup they go with as well, because they're a dangerous, dangerous team. Um, but still, away from home, never easy, especially when you're going to Sardinia. I think that's where Cagliari is. These are tough games to go play. So love the bet. Going to be tailing it, blind tailing it, because Buckets doesn't know who the fuck says Fabregas <laughs> is. Let's go to your best bet for Tuesday. We are stretching the bets today, baby. Yeah, we are. And says Fabregas, if you're watching, just know that Monday is the day that I turned 30 years old. So I would love for you to cash that ticket for the birthday win there. Just throwing that out there. For Tuesday, we're sticking in La Liga. We absolutely had to stretch this out. I had to go to places that made me uncomfortable to find a bet for Tuesday, but I managed to find... One, and it's for a team that I know for the life of me I can't pronounce, no matter how many times I bet them, Rayo, Volachano, Volachano, Volcano, whatever it is, versus Barcelona. Ian, I am taking this one very simple and betting something that I almost never bet. I'm looking at a straight money line here. I'm taking Barcelona on that money line at minus 125. I do know that Rayo is a very difficult place to play. I know that Barcelona's been a little bit lackluster here in their preseason matches as well as just the start of the season as they barely pulled out that two or pulled off that 2-0 win against Valencia. But I'm still looking at a Barcelona side that does have my boy Robert Lewandowski, that does have an in-form and terrifying Lamine Yamal that has Rafinha right behind Lewandowski and has Torres there as well. This is a team that offensively should have enough to make a big start to the season. And when you have Real Madrid dropping points in the first game and when you have Real Madrid just looming, knowing how terrifying this squad is, Barcelona has to take advantage of any slip-up that they can. So the fact that Real Madrid has already dropped two points means that Barcelona should be more motivated than ever to try to widen this gap at the beginning of the season, knowing that the longer this season goes on, the harder this challenge is going to be. It's not going to be easy to beat Rio, but I've got Barcelona winning this game 2-1 here in the second match day. So I got to take that money line at minus 125 because the money line is actually better than the team total. If you bet Barca to score two here, that's minus 150. The money line to minus 125. I'd rather get the juice down for our loyal listeners. Rayo Vallecano. Rayo Vallecano. I can't do the R roll, but Vallecano. I can do that. Rayo Vallecano. They are a team that's based 
in they're on the outskirts of Madrid, which is a pretty interesting one for Barcelona fans. Uh, just the FYI for the last three results that Barcelona have had when they've gone to that destination, um, they were beaten heavily when it came. No, I'm only joking. One one in 2023 away from home in La Liga. Uh, they had uh, April 2023, so the end of that season they lost two one, and then one visit before that they lost one nil in 2021. Difficult place to go play, but you know what? Under Hansi Flick, I'm intrigued to see what what's going to happen with Barcelona this season because they showed some real guts and determination, Barca, this past weekend. I was really impressed with what they did do. Um, obviously, against uh, Valencia, the way they came back, they're Lewandowski scoring a couple of goals in that game. But then in between, obviously, the Rayo Vallecano game, they've got a game this weekend on Saturday against Athletic Club Bilbao Buckets, which is absolutely insane. So they play again real quickly on the Tuesday. So I'm wondering if squad rotation is going to come into the mix. But I tell you what, after watching in the opening day of match day, Atletico Madrid, Barcelona and Real Madrid, have you changed your mind a little bit on Real Madrid after their performance against Mallorca or do you think they'll come good? I think they'll come good. I think Atletico Madrid will come good as well. To be honest, I'm not too worried about either side. Real Madrid, I know a lot of people... Actually, let me do a quick rant here, Ian, because this is important. A lot of people have one bad betting experience with the team and go, I will never bet the side again. I saw a lot of Twitter say that about Real Madrid and a lot of Twitter say that about Tottenham Hotspurs. You got to give these teams a couple chances because there's so much money to be made betting on these good scoring teams. One bad result does not knock them off for me at all. Okay, let's uh, touch upon the Bundesliga because we'll welcome it back this weekend. <laughs> wait for the Bundesliga to come back. I'm super duper excited. Um, it kicks off on Friday with Borussia Mönchengladbach against the champions uh, Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, real quickly, do you have a prediction for that game, Buckets? I do. I've got Leverkusen winning that one 2-0, so that was a tough one for me to bet. Yeah, tough one to bet, but also it's a bit of a derby game and it's an opening game of the season. It's a very difficult place to go play Borussia Mönchengladbach. So I'm really interested to see how they handle that situation. Let's real quickly touch upon our teams and see how they're going to get on this weekend. Um, I'm going to ask you how you think producer Jeff's team, Borussia Dortmund against Frankfurt, will do on Saturday. It's the later kickoff on Saturday, 12.30 Eastern against Frankfurt at home. Prediction from you? I think Jeff's got the hardest out of all of our teams here. I've got Dortmund winning that game, but I think it's going to be very close. A chippy 2-1 to Dortmund. 4-2 for Borussia Dortmund for me. I'm just thinking Dortmund are going to have a good season this year. Dortmund are going to be better than last year. Leipzig are going to be better than last year. Leverkusen not as good as last year, and neither will Stuttgart be as good last year. Producer Jeff, now's your time to input what you think the score will be between Borussia Dortmund and Frankfurt. Thanks for that. Okay, let's move on to the mighty FC St. Pauli against Heidenheim, newly promoted teams into the Bundesliga. I'm going for FC St. Pauli to get the victory against Heidenheim. Uh, my boys were uh, definitely a little rattled when it came to the German Cup this past weekend. Um, obviously not great for Buckets' bet either. Uh, we had to go to extra time and it kind of crushed all of us. But at the same time, St. Pauli back in the Bundesliga. I don't see us fucking up our game at home. So I'm going for St. Pauli to win by three goals to one against Heidenheim. I'm expecting goals galore this weekend in the Bundesliga buckets. What you got for me? I've got St. Pauli winning as well. And I'm not just saying that because you're my best friend and I don't want to piss you off. But I don't know if St. Pauli are going to score three. I'm actually doing the opposite. I've got a low scoring one nil victory here to St. Pauli. Producer Jeff, what are you going for? St. Pauli against Heidenheim. All right, let's get into Wolfsburg against Bayern Munich. It is your boys back in action away to Wolfsburg. It's a difficult place to go play. We've got Vincent Company in charge of the club. Joey, don't fucking test me. Do not fucking test me. Play fucking football. What are you going to fucking write tomorrow about everything? Fucking play. Bayern Munich have made a ton of signings. They look good, man. I'm just throwing it out there. But does it take time for them to gel? Does it take moment for them to really come together? I mean, this is going to be an interesting start for them. What is your score prediction? Buckets. I've got a crazy one for everyone here. I've got Bayern Munich winning this one 4-3. to three. I think Wolfsburg are going to score goals. Bayern's defense especially is going to take a couple weeks to get rolling. This one's going to be goals galore. Producer Jeff, what's your prediction for Bayern Munich at Wolfsburg? All right, I'm actually going for Bayern Munich to get a big victory here. And I think Bayern Munich get off to a flying start. I think they win the league, and we've talked about this before, earlier than we could have imagined. I think it's an April victory for Bayern Munich in the league. So I'm starting off with a 3-0 Bayern Munich victory. It could be 4, 
could be four. So if you want to tail those total goals, team totals all the way through, it could be four. Uh, Wolfsburg not necessarily selling it to me just yet, but these opening games are unpredictable. You never, ever know. Of course, we all thought Real Madrid were going to win 17-0 against Mallorca in that opening day. And look what happened. It finished 1-1. And Kylian Mbappe was frustrated. So it could still happen to Bayern Munich that they get frustrated. New manager, new players, new team, new chemistry. These um, these games are very, very difficult to predict, Buckets, but it's great to have the Bundesliga back. It's great to have another epic show once again from you, Buckets. I'm glad you're safe and sound, and I'm glad you found your way out of the woods to do the show today. I wanted to take a second to uh, show you all the rations we have left so far in our bag. So Freya, there's Freya, still happy, still healthy. Here's our, our supplies. We've got some, excuse me, bud. Freya, excuse me. We've got dog food. An apple. Yeah, I was prepared to do the show in the woods, worst case scenario. I had actually started, I'll send the picture to death. I built a little wooden shelter canopy up against a tree, so I was ready. Well, if you take a look at this, I tented my pants. I've made myself a nice pants tent shelter. Yeah, we're glad you're home safe and sound, that Freya is safe and sound as well, that you actually fed yourself very well, because I did see on social media you had a really exclusive dinner as soon as you got back. What did you make yourself <laughs> once you got back home? I made the most bachelor meal you've ever seen in your life. Two microwaved hot dogs with shredded cheese and ketchup on top. Jeff, throw the picture up. I'll make sure that you have it. It was five-star exquisite. Gordon Ramsay himself couldn't prep something better if he tried. I am just picturing you in the woods trying to get out of there thinking, oh, when I get home, I'm going to have two <laughs> hot dogs. And oh, man. Again, that's not that image of the hot dog hitting the face is coming back up. That gif is coming back up into my mind. Uh, we went to the unbelievable friendly game yesterday, Gotham FC against uh, Chelsea women, and it was brilliant. Um, brilliant game it was actually to watch on um, on Monday. Really enjoyed watching the game. Really enjoyed the quality of the football. And watching, I tell you what, women's football now across the world, the, the, the true... The supporters, the, the true atmosphere. I mean, it was electric at these games, Buckets. Took the kids, took hot cocoa, and we had a blast at that game. And I'm just wondering, and it's a curious question I've always wanted to ask you, Buckets. Why can you not place any wagers on NWSL? Is it something to do with the league, or is it just something you think that's un unpredictable? Or like, what is it? It's something that is underappreciated by the markets, because in certain states, you actually can. And it's, but even when you do have those games available, it's very limited markets. You can bet money line or you can bet the over under on goals and then nothing else. I think it's something that needs to be changed. I think just from a betting perspective, yeah. there's a lot of value in betting these matches, but also just out of the respect of the women's teams as well, because they're playing great football. And the fact that we can bet on overseas women's leagues, but we can't bet on women's leagues here in the States. For me, it's a problem and it's something that we need to fix moving forward. Yeah, let's change that because I think some of these games are absolutely terrific and individual players now are really just next level footballers. So we got some hella athletes and of course the Olympic champions are the US women's national team as well. So let's support our women and see if we can get the betting in amongst the women's game as well. John Buckstein, another great show. Producer Jeff, uh -huh. love you. Continue to work your magic out there. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bet responsibly. Most importantly, please fucking bet responsibly. It's been a very difficult time for most people out there, especially through preseason into the new season season results are unpredictable these are just opportunities for you to place wagers don't bet your house on them make sure you're betting responsibly with money that you can afford to lose so just like my boy john bucket timer is going to do this weekend he's going to clean up he's looking for the sweep this weekend from our show stoppage time to all the loyal listeners out there from myself from producer jeff from john bucket timer from hot cocoa make sure you have a great weekend and absolutely happy